Today I was contacted by a journalist asking me my thoughts on possible saturation of data from shark tagging and things like O-Search and whether or not there were data gaps that needed to be filled. And oh yes, so that means I'm making yet another video about tagging. And I'm gonna go back to South Africa and share with you some very specific sharks. And this footage is compliments of Walter Bernardus. He had a rather incredible experience with these sharks that were attracted to a whale carcass and was able to spend time with white sharks out in the open ocean as a result of that whale carcass. As cool as the footage is, what's important here is the location. We're up at Alawal Shoal, just south of Durban, but part of the Kwazu Natal coastline. These sharks in this footage, clearly suffering from deformed dorsal fins, were tagged down on the Cape by Osearch and Osearch's collaborators several years before this footage. Let me add some techie sound effects so that you are impressed by the data I'm showing you. So Osearch tagged these sharks in these three locations along the coast. The location this video was shot is up here. The vast majority of the tags, including the ones seen in this footage, stopped transmitting shortly after deployment. That means that even if you bought into the hype of the necessity of these sorts of tags, these tags are literally worthless. Nothing but deformities attached to these animals. I'm going to take a moment and go on a tirade about that. We love to talk about respect for these animals and loving these animals and how majestic they are and how perfect they are. And suddenly we have no problem with absolutely ruining that perfection and raping that majesty by pulling them onto a boat after putting a massive hook through their perfect mouths, drilling through their fins, and attaching something absolutely hideous to its body. Now comes the age-old, yes, but certain sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. We have to do this in order to save the animals. Oh, if only there was a shred of truth to that. Not only are these tags worthless in terms of not working, they are worthless in terms of being redundant. Not only is the data not new, but it wasn't necessary to use tags at all in order to understand movements. Visual evidence via photographs, and nowadays, more and more popular, is video evidence. It allows us to identify sharks seen in various locations. In some cases, visual information is combined with technology. And I'm talking about the less invasive tagging methods. I'm talking about the pat tags that are attached via lance as the shark swims by, no hooking, no subduing, no capturing necessary. Those are the tags that gave us our first insights into the migrations from Guadalupe and the Farallon Islands to the White Shark Cafe and on out to Hawaii, as well as the transoceanic migration over to Australia from South Africa, and was also the means of first proving this migration route along this coast in South Africa. I need to clarify that they tagged a shitload of sharks. So although the majority of tags failed, some of them worked for a while. And they also used multiple tags, so even when the spot tags failed, there were backup tags to provide some data. So for those of you who don't read these research papers, and that's everyone, you don't know that the data coming from the tags is not necessarily from the spot tags which are being heralded as the saviors for these sharks. Therefore, we got some data that showed that the sharks go up this coast like we already knew that they did. You want me to prove that? Well, of course you do, so let's do it. Now, even if we ignore all the fishing data, which was our earliest form of data for showing us where we can find these animals and what size they are when we find them, we do also have technology and visual information to provide as additional evidence. Like I said, the O-Search data of the sharks moving up this coast was redundant, as is proven by this study conducted a decade before O-Search's arrival, using less invasive methods, once again tagged down in the Cape and then going on up toward Mozambique. Yes, pat tags. Yes, pat tags. Now I shouldn't call pat tags uninvasive, they're just less invasive by a long shot. But perhaps the most important point is that no matter what tags we're talking about or who's doing the tagging, humans are failing to save sharks. This migration pattern that has already been documented takes these sharks right through the drum lines and shark nets set out by the KwaZulu-Natal Sharks Board. 
This organization is considered by many to be the leading threat against white shark survival in South Africa, as well as other shark species. But Osearch and other scientists said and did nothing about these guys, and continue not to do anything about the KwaZulu-Natal Sharks Board. I don't know if I can think of anything that better personifies the issue with tagging. Here we have people out there pursuing tagging to get data to save sharks while completely ignoring the actual threat many of which actually collaborate with the Sharks Board in order to get more data for their papers, meaning getting tissue samples from other species of sharks that the Natal Sharks Board also kills in order to complete their research. Sound familiar? I know of some pretty famous scientists who don't take a public stand against shark fishing tournaments, but will grab some tissue samples from those shark fishing tournaments. People, what data do you think is hiding at the bottom of the analysis of all of this information? that we don't have to stop killing sharks. We are studying these animals into extinction while sitting at home clapping for the next groundbreaking study that's announced.